Welcome to another edition of Panther Sports Talk right here on WIU. On today's program, we recap the big OVC championship win over Jacksonville State this past Saturday. Also look forward to the game at UT Martin and then relive some of the highlights of the past season and on Saturday's OVC championship celebration. All that and much more right here on Panther Sports Talk on WIU. Production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by Johnson's Automotive Service is a proud supporter of Panther Sports on WEIU. Johnson's is a complete car facility for all your automotive repair and maintenance needs. Johnson's Automotive Service, keeping your life running. Welcome to another edition of Panther Sports Talk right here on WIU. I'm your host, Rich Moser, joined every week by EIU football coach Dino Babers and coach Start off this week's program by congratulations. Last week we said conference co-champions, but you didn't like the co, you wanted to scratch that out. And you guys did that on Saturday and outright champions for the second straight year. You know, how exciting to see the seniors in front of uh, their parents, to have uh, all the seniors and the parents come out in the pregame. And then with the fans and the, the community and the student body, along with the administration and, and being able to win OBC back-to-back -back championships at home uh, just a just a very a moment that uh, I'll cherish forever. Yeah, that's something that you talk about moments that are scripted over the course of a coaching career or a playing career for a player. And the fact that you guys have been able to do it two years in a row, the seniors have been able to win the conference championship at home, that just makes it that more special. I mean, you've been coaching a long time. I don't know many times that you've had that happen maybe once, but I'm going to guess probably not back-to-back -back years ever. Not back-to-back. -back. First time it's ever happened. You know, and, it, and it's something that you want to cherish and, and you want it to stay with you forever. Uh, just a flashback, I remember uh, uh, last year uh, I stepped away and Coach, Coach uh, McLeod and all the guys got in there and hammered and they uh, was joking around and they took that picture with the OVC championship. And everybody's like, oh, Coach, you should have been up there. I said, no, 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 no. I want to see it. And then the exact same thing happened this year. I backed away, and, and there's a great picture on, on our website of Coach McLeod and the defense and all the guys. Because as a coach, you want to be able to, to visualize and, and, and plant those memories in your mind as well. One that I'll never forget is when we uh, beat Oklahoma when I was at Baylor for the very first time, and RG3 won the Heisman. I can still remember just the fans just rushing the field, and I – got myself away and got up on, on, on a, a barrier and sat down at about seven feet and just watched them and just watched the whole thing and, and just lock it into my mind forever. And the, those are the memories that are just special and precious for a coach. Now the other memory I'm going to bet you remembered from the previous year to this year and you, you, you kind of got almost got away with it is last year you got soaked with the Gatorade. This year you kind of saw it coming as the players kind of transition down the line. I think they got Coach McLeod, they got a couple of the other assistant coaches that were down there, and you knew they were coming for you because I kind of saw you slowly back away, and luckily the game was in hand when you did the 50-yard sprint across the field to the other side, so the officials didn't call a penalty, but they eventually did get you. I think the guys cornered you, and you called unfair penalty or unnecessary roughness on them. Well, first of all, I mean, at, at my age, a lot of things go. You know, your legs go, your hamstring goes, your abs go, but your peripheral vision never goes. And I, I saw them reaching for that thing. I said, you guys aren't getting me wet. It's cold out here. I don't want to get wet. And, uh, you know, they, they tried to get me a couple of times while the game was going on. And I just wasn't going to have any, not have it. But uh, I don't know how they got me. Somewhere on the other side of the field, I think they got some of the Jacksonville State coaches as well because next thing I know, I had Gatorade. My eyes were stinging, and uh, I was all the way on the other side of the field after a handshake. So if, if, if they're going to be respectful and do the things that I want them to do during the season and that's their payoff is to hit me with Gatorade at the end after we win an OVC championship, I guess I'm going to have to take that. Now, a lot of important decisions are always made during a football game. The most important that may have happened that set up the tone of the game is on the opening coin flip and the fact that you guys decided to defer, which made Jacksonville State then either have to choose to have the win with the win or receive the ball. And so that was probably maybe an integral decision as it played out in the fact that with the win, you guys were able to score 35 points. You know, it was interesting because I heard uh, Coach Bill Clark talk about the most 
how much he wanted to win the uh, coin toss. And for me, I always want the ball. And the guys know that I always want the ball because we don't like a lot of gray area in our program. But, uh, you know, God, God had his hand on this one. He said, hey, it's going to be a major win and it's going to affect the game. And uh, if we won the toss, we wanted to defer. Now, if they would have took the win, we'd have took the ball. But uh, the right thing to do is to take the ball and not give us the extra possession. And then with that win, I knew that uh, if my quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, was going to have a problem throwing into that win, I knew that their quarterback wasn't going to be able to throw into the win. So it was a huge advantage for us, and it gave us an opportunity, I believe, to have the, the highest scoring quarter in the history of EIU. Yes, it was. 35 points, and you guys, the guy who was integral in the entire part of it is a guy who hasn't started the whole season, kind of called into duty this week. Uh, Taylor Duncan a little bit banged up. You guys, late in the season, decided that we could get through without him. You want to be able to rest him and be healthy this week and then in the playoff run. Shep Little gets in first career start and, and makes it a memorable game for himself and for the people watching. You know, just, just a proud part of the family, somebody that's been in the outhouse and now he's in the front house with his feet up on the living room table. Just love everything. We call him Shep Big now. We don't call him <laughs> Shep Little anymore. We call him Shep Big because he always shows up big. And, and uh, he's just doing a, phen a phenomenal job, not only offensively, but also as one of the leading punt returners in the country. Now, what he kind of did, and for people that didn't see the game, those would be showing the highlights while we talk about this, ran for two touchdowns, caught a touchdown. So those are normal for him. He's done that during the course of the year. Threw a touchdown, which is a, a play you guys have had in the bag most of the year, but kind of decided to the right time to run it. And was scored or was integral in the first four of the five touchdowns that you guys scored and really had put the game away there with his own play. You know, it's, it, takes a, it takes an entire offense, an entire defense, an entire kicking game to have a quarter like that. And Shep's going to be the first one to tell you that the offensive line and all those other guys are going to get a lot of credit. Now, first of all, he did throw a touchdown pass, but I do remember seeing some quarterback jump over two guys like he was Michael Jordan and catch the football and then get a pass interference and land with his back in the end zone. So it was a, it was a hell of a catch. It really was Jimmy Garoppolo. But there is no doubt. Uh, I mean, that's something that I'll always remember for somebody to have to score touchdowns in those manners and to have it all happen in a football game and to have it all happen in a quarter is really unbelievable. And you, because you were going to have him haul the ball a lot during the course of the game, you didn't really have him back there for punts or kickoffs or there may be a, he might have scored five different ways. Well, he, he, we've got a lot of guys on this football team. We don't need Shep to do it all, but uh, he, he's an exciting player. I'm really excited for him. Now, you, you did talk about the offensive line, yeoman's work by those guys there. You guys have been, I guess, pigeonholed, and this will be a term you might use, as a throwing team. But I've heard you say over and over again that the game is won in the trenches. In the last two weeks, you guys have kind of showed people that, hey, we know that if the weather turns cold and we can't throw it the way we want to throw it, We've got a run game that you guys are going to have to stop to. 716 yards in the last two games, school record 413 this past weekend. And while Shep Litter had 245 of them, we talked about him already, Jimmy Lira had over 100. A couple other guys had some big days as well. You know, it's, it's, our, our offense is a lot like Baylor's, but yet it's different. Baylor has the weather down there in the south. There's a lot of things that they don't have to practice in their offense that they can become efficient doing the exact same thing over and over and over again. The one thing about moving this offense, this style of offense further north is you, you need to add certain things to it. And my coach is always teasing me, we got too much, we got too much. And I said, we do not have too much. You cannot predict the weather. And when the weather goes south, so to speak, when you're this far up north, you better have options. You can't say, hey, we can't run our offense in this type of weather. So it was great to see that all that work that we've been putting into being prepared just in case something like this happened really did pay off for us on Saturday. And then Jimmy Garoppolo, we talked about him all season, did a great job of just really managing the game and doing what he needed to do when he needed to do it, didn't force things, saw the run game was working, the short passes were working. So you guys kind of monopolized or, or capitalized on that as you went through. Finished the game over 4,000 yards passing out for the year. Shepard Little went over 1,000 yards. You had asked me about this a couple weeks ago. Four school now that's done that in FCS history with a 4,000 yard passer and a 1,000 yard rusher. If Taylor Duncan, when he gets healthy, Eastern's going to be the first school to ever have 2,000-yard rushers and a 4,000-yard passer at our level. 
And I know you're not going to feed the ball to Taylor a bunch of times to get him over 1,000, but it'll come in the course of how you guys normally run your offense. No, I might. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it, it, would, it, would, it would tickle me to death to see Taylor Duncan get 1,000 yards. He's, he's meant so much to this team, not only with his play on the field, but his leadership in, 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 the, uh, in the locker room. He, he represents the team so well. I, I, I want him back. I want to get him back. And, I, and if I can help him without hurting the football team, because I know he's an unselfish guy, I'd love to see him get 1,000 yards. And then you're going to have to look up the stat about 4, 000, one 4,000 yard passer and two 1,000 yard rushers on the same football team to see if that's ever been done at any level. Okay. I'd probably start with Baylor to see if you guys done it there first. And then from there, we'll check it out. Turn our focus to the game you guys have this week. UT Martin, I kind of know a little bit about the motivation behind when you go to the to play this team you've already locked up the playoff bid you've already locked up the conference championship but this is the only team that this senior class and yourself as a coach in the last two years that's put a loss on you guys's record you know jason uh J jason kind of befriended me when I, my, my first ovc media day and we spent a lot of time together and uh, then he turned around and uh got after us really well last year and I made it a point this year not to say boo to him. And I, I said hi because a grown man needs to exchange pleasantries. I said hello to him. And then when he came over, I said, Jason, I'm not going to talk to you this year because last year we talked too much and you beat us. I love you, but, uh, you know, we want to get we want to be one on one versus the uh, UT Martin. And uh, we're going up there to win a football game. It's a uh, it's a situation where we haven't won down there since 2001. I believe they've. They've won three of the last three contests, maybe five out of the last six. So they've kind of had our number a little bit. And I want to say Jason's like five and two versus EIU. So uh, they've got a, a very, very good football team. Statistically, when you look at the statistics, we're right behind each other. Either we're number one and they're number two or we're number two and they're number one. So this is probably the second best football team in the conference. And... Uh, we're playing them at their place, and if they win, they're in. And if they lose, they don't know. So we're going to let the chips fall where they may. I mean, we're going we're gonna to load up the train, and we're going to roll down there, and we're going to try to play uh, EIU football to the best of our ability and hopefully come out with a victory. Now, all year long we've talked about teams that lost veteran quarterbacks, and last year the league was really full of, of veteran quarterbacks, and – and you have to know that when you see that a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo ends up as a second-team all-conference guy. The guy he was a second-team all-conference guy was Derek Carr. He was a, a great quarterback down there for UT Martin. They had two new guys that have kind of had to learn the system this year, and they have kind of platooned. One of them's got a little bit of a famous name. There's uncles Brett Favre, Dylan Favre. Mm -hmm. And on film, it sounds like I haven't seen any film, but he kind of plays a little bit reckless like that too, mm -hmm. whereas the other one is kind of maybe a little bit more disciplined of a quarterback. Yes, sir. <laughs> I think that you got uh, the Favre kid is he, he's never going to give up on a play. He's going to do whatever he takes to make that play. That's the last play he has to make on, on this planet, then he's going to make it. The other guy kind of – uh, protects the football a little bit, doesn't make as many mistakes, but he doesn't make as many plays. So they rotate those two guys. We don't know who they're going to get. They got a heck of a tailback, uh, second or third in the conference in rushing. He's been a little banged up, but I'm sure he'll be ready to go for us. And what's, uh, what's overlooked is they, have, they may have the best field goal kicker in the conference. He's kicked a bunch of 50 yarders, three kicks over 50 yarders. And their defense is really, really good. And uh, they're good at stopping the run. And uh, they've, had, they've had some teams throw on them, but you, you really, really got to be patient. So this is a good, a good group. And last, last year when we went down there, we just got smoked in the kicking game. I mean, absolutely embarrassed in the kicking game. And we need to hold serve or even win that part of the game if we're going to have a real chance. Now, the other guy that, that you kind of skipped over there is Jeremy Butler. He's their wide receiver. He's right up there with, when you talk about Eric Lohr and Walter Powell at, at Murray State, he's right there in that same conversation. He's a kid that transferred in last year, and I think they had had another receiver, Quentin Sims, who got a lot of the attention, and he really helped complement him. Just like you guys have had a couple guys with Eric Lohr drawing a lot of that attention, you know, Keandre, Dre, or Keandre Gober and Adam Drake have kind of come up a little bit. He doesn't have anybody else this year. Does that – help you guys maybe play some defenses that focus a little bit more on him as their number one target? Sure, I, I really believe that. He is really good. He, last year, uh, the Pal kid, the Pal kid's probably more athletic, but Jeremy Butler is a better wide receiver. 
And uh, I think he's the second best receiver in the league behind Eric Laura. So he's talented. He can make plays. They can throw the ball up to him. He can come down with it. And uh, they don't have the accessories that they had last year, like you said, with the Sims kid. But Butler is good enough to beat single coverage, and he's good enough to beat double coverage if you don't play it right. Now, the other thing you talked about is their defense, and, and they're a very balanced defense. They get a lot of sacks. A couple weeks ago, one of their, I think he's a safety or, or a linebacker, plays a combination of both. Tony Bell, he, he 4.5 sacks against Murray. But it, that seemed to be a situation where they had Murray and pass-only type situations and were able to really pin their ears back. Or is that, do they bring pressure like that all the time, and that's something that they like to do out of blitzes, or is he just kind of was opportunistic? You know, it's first. He, first of all, he has ten sacks. He leads the conference in sacks, and he's there's a oh I'm gonna forget the name of the other linebacker. They have I want to say Johnson. Yep. They have Johnson, who's kind of like Erlacher for the Bears. This guy never makes a mistake. You try to run a reverse, he's there. You try to play pass and throw over his head, he picks the ball off. I think he came up with the big interception against EKU. These he he's never out of position. So between these two players. One guy that does everything right, and the other guy that's reckless, he wants to go sack crazy, kind of like Briggs for the Bears. I mean, they have a very, very talented linebacker crew. Um, it, it's going to be it's going to be very interesting what happens down there because what they've decided on defense. Typically, they either say, "Hey, we're going to blitz this football team," or we're going to play uh, zone coverage versus this football team. And uh, I don't know what they're going to do to us. And based off of that, they kind of go with that game plan. The the whole time they blitzed Tennessee State every single snap, played press man to man all over the field, and did some of that versus Memphis as well. Then they played some other teams. They get back and they play zone and let the linebacker and let Bell try to make plays instead of bringing blitzes. So I don't know which way they're going to do, which what they're going to do. We're going to try to prepare for both and just kind of see what happens. All right, Coach. Well, best of luck down there. Reminder: the game is at one o'clock. You can hear the game on the Panther Football Radio Network. It's an ESPN three broadcast. Also, a reminder. This weekend, you guys, on Sunday, selection show, it'll be at 1030 on ESPNU. There'll be a selection show watch party over at the, the Student Rec Center here on campus. Everybody's open, invited to come watch that game and kind of find out the Panthers' fate. I know you've seen some of those brachiology-type things and, and seen different teams plugged in and out. You guys, more than likely a chance to get a buy. Is there a, I guess, a style of team that, that you would like to see match up in that first round that you guys could potentially play, or are you kind of just – Hey, we're in there, and as long as we're at home, we're okay. You know, it's – it's. I guess the, the answer is as long as we're at home and we're in there, uh, it's okay. You know, if, if we win the game and we go in as a number two seed, that means you're playing the number two, three, number two team in the country, the number three team in the country, the number five team, the number seven team. I mean, that's the harder bracket. There's no doubt about it. So you've got to be right more often if you go through that bracket. If we happen not to win the football game and we go in as an eight or something like that, now you're on the one side, but that's the easier side of the bracket. You, you get, obviously, you get an early date with most likely North Dakota State, and, and whatever happens, happens. So there's positives and negatives. We'll just see how it all turns out, and then whatever, hands, whatever cards are dealt to us, we'll play that hand. All right, Coach, best of luck. Like we said, a reminder, the Selection Show Party, 1030 over at the Student Rec Center. This weekend, the show will be broadcast live on ESPNU if you can't make it there. The game is on ESPN3, 1 o'clock start down at UT Martin. Coach, best of luck on that. Wrap up this week's show with This Week in Athletics, followed by some highlights of the OVC Championship win over Jacksonville State this past weekend. Thanks for watching, everybody. Panther fans, here's what's going on in Panther Athletics. Panther football wins the 2013 OVC Football Championship, winning 52-14 over number 22 Jacksonville State at O'Brien Field. EIU is 10-1 on the season and 7-0 in the OVC. Volleyball wrapped up regular season play in the OVC. They're 12-4 in OVC play this season and 18-11 overall. They wrap up the regular season winning at SIU Edwardsville 3-2 and losing at Belmont 3-1. EIU is the number three seed in the upcoming OVC Volleyball Championships. Cross Country wrapped up their season competing at the NCAA West Regional. The men placed 16th overall, the women placed 27th. Pablo Ramirez was the top men's runner in 48th place, while Victoria Corton was the top women's finisher in 107th place. Women's rugby ended their regular season on a winning note, winning 2-0 in rugby sevens against Illinois State at Lakeside Field. They finished the season 2-6. Men's basketball now 2-1 on the season after winning two games this past week, 67-60 over Olivet Nazarene at Lance Arena. 
and a non-conference road win at Illinois Chicago, 86-66. Women's basketball now 0-3 to start the season. They lost 65-53 to Indiana State at Lance Arena and lost 71-52 at St. Louis. Now here's what to watch for this week. On Thursday, volleyball is at the OVC Tournament in Moorhead, Kentucky. EIU will take on Eastern Kentucky at 10 o'clock in the morning. And Thursday night, women's basketball takes on Loyola Chicago at 7 o'clock. You can listen to that game live on HitMix 88.9 WEIU or then watch the game on tape delay on WEIU-TV at 9 o'clock. On Friday, volleyball at the OVC Tournament if they won their Thursday match against Eastern Kentucky. On Saturday, swimming is at the House of Champions meet all day. Volleyball at the OVC Championships, competing for the OVC Championship if they won their first two matches of the tournament. Panther football at UT Martin for their regular season finale at 1 o'clock. You can listen to that game on HitMix 88.9 WEIU, or you can watch it online at ESPN3. Men's basketball back at Lance Arena for a 7 o'clock game against Roosevelt University. You can listen to that game on HitMix 88.9 WEIU. On Sunday, swimming continues with competition at the House of Champions meet. And at 10.30 at the EIU Student Rec Center, a viewing of the FCS football selection show as Panther football finds out where they'll be playing and who they'll be playing in the upcoming football playoffs. On Monday, swimming wraps up competition at the House of Champions meet and women's basketball with their annual Kids Day game at 12 o'clock. They'll take on in-state rival Western Illinois. You can listen to that game on HitMix 88.9 WEIU. For Panther Sports Talk, I'm Ramin Kerbasyun. She turns the ball over, Orisova coast to coast on the layup, and hoop, and the foul. The Palombizio comes off the screen there, Payne, three-point shot is good. Eastern Illinois Panther basketball is on WEIU. The EIU women continue their non-conference schedule as Sabi Orisova and Jordan Crunk lead the Panthers against in-state rival Loyola Chicago. It's the Panthers and Ramblers Thursday at 9 on WEIU, your home for Panther basketball. For the Eastern Illinois Panthers could wrap up an undisputed Ohio Valley Conference Championship today with a win over the Gamecocks of Jacksonville State. They, they fumble a handoff, it's loose in the backfield, and it looks like the Panthers have recovered. They have at the 15-yard line, and the Panthers get a great break to start the game. Andre Hodge has come in the game in a blocking back in front of Shepard and the pistol. Little will get the handoff up the middle, good hole, and... He's in, touchdown, Eastern Illinois, over right guard, a big hole, and Shepard Little got hit at the one and plunged into the end zone. Garoppolo has him at the line, back to pass, throws it on the right, wide open at the five, it's Little, beat a man, and he goes in, touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Little stopped and caught it at the five, made a little deep to beat the defender and get into the end zone for the touchdown. Shepard Little almost took that all the way, it's first and 10 at the 37. Out of the pistol, Little again, another good hold. Now he will break away, he'll score. 20, 10, 5, the third touchdown of the day for Shepard Little. He broke a tackle at the 25 and sprinted the rest of the way. Shepard Little's back in the game for Easter. Second and seven at the 10, toss to Little, heading to the right. He wants to throw a pass, throwing back to Garoppolo on the left sideline, and he caught it at the goal line. Touchdown, there's a penalty flag. Jimmy Garoppolo might have just caught his first touchdown pass. He's going crazy down there on the near sideline. Fourth and one, Garoppolo gives it up the middle there. A big hole may go. He's gone at the 40, at the 30, at the 20, at the 10. Jimmy Lira for the touchdown for Eastern Illinois. Jimmy Lira, a 56-yard touchdown run to make it 34 to nothing, Eastern Illinois. And that's a school record for the most points in a quarter in EIU history. 46 seconds to go in the first quarter. Shotgun snap, short tail, four-man rush. He's back, pressured, and he's going to be sacked. Tino Fonte got him at the 37-yard line. Fifth sack of the year for Fonte. Little, the only running back. Garoppolo, two-step drop, throwing the fade, going for Drake. Corner of the end zone, touchdown, Eastern Illinois. That's just a teardrop right into the arms of Adam Drake between two defenders. Once again, just a perfect pass right between two defenders. He set by into the wind. That couldn't have been any more perfect. There's the shotgun snap. They blitzed him. He's pressured. He lost the ball. It's loose in the backfield. Who's got it? Robert Haynes hit him, knocked the ball free at the 25. No signal from the officials, but the Panthers have it. Patrick Hort has the football walking off the field. 
Robert Haynes is the guy that came in, I thought, and blew up the quarterback. Eastern will celebrate the Ohio Valley Conference Championship for the second year in a row. They win it outright with a decisive victory today. <laughs> Production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by Johnson's Automotive Service is a proud supporter of Panther Sports on WEIU. Johnson's is a complete car facility for all your automotive repair and maintenance needs. Johnson's Automotive Service, keeping your life running.